नमस्कार म अम्बिका हाङमाङ अंग्रेजी सिके रेडियो कार्यक्रममा यहाँहरुलाई स्वागत छ चैत्र 11 गते त देश लकडाउनमा छ आज पनि रेडियोको माध्यमबाट शिक्षा लिने उद्देश्यको साथ उपस्थित भइसकेका छौँ विद्यार्थी भाइ बहिनी हो अब रेडियो सेटको नजिक आउनुस् है यो अंग्रेजी सिके रेडियो कार्यक्रम हरेक दिन यसै समयमा रेडियो तमोर 102 मेगाहर्ज र रेडियो अट्राई 101.2 मेगाहर्जमा सुन्न सक्नुहुनेछ नोटबुक कलम पाठ्यपुस्तक र रेकर्ड गर्न मिल्ने सामग्री तयारी अवस्थामा पक्कै राख्नु भएकै होला होइन यदि छैन भने तयार गर्दै गर्नुस् ल आजको बसैमा अनिवार्य अंग्रेजी विषय अन्तर्गत कक्षा 10 को युनिट 9 मा पढाई हुने एक्सप्रेसिंग अनएक्सपेक्टेड रिजल्ट्स को अर्को अंकको बारेमा चर्चा गर्ने छौ विद्यार्थी भाइ बहिनी हो तयार हुनुहुन्छ हैन आजको प्रस्तुतिका झलकहरु इन द फाइनल पोजिसन्स अफ लाइन्स अफ द पोएम्स एन्ड सङ्ग्स डे ले वे साइ आइ बाइ विद्यार्थी भाइ बहिनीहरु हो ढिला नगरी आजको बसेको उठान गरी हालौ प्रस्तुति सहित आउँदै हुनुहुन्छ शान्ति बस्ने ल त अब कक्षा कोठामै प्रवेश गरौ हुन्छ हैन हेलो स्टुडेन्ट्स वेलकम ब्याक टु द क्लास I am Shanti Basnet here with another lesson from unit 9 that is expressing unexpected results from grade 10 English book students in today's class we will continue to do the exercises of the poem the road not taken by Robert Frost. So, I hope you have your books ready. Dear students, we are learning Unit 9 Expressing Unexpected Results and under this unit, in the previous class, we learned a poem, The Road Not Taken. So, in today's class, as I have already told you, we will continue the exercises of this poem, which are given in your book. So, let's begin. Look at your book at page number 9595. Nine, Question number 1. And the question is vocabulary in use. There are two questions, I and II. In the last class, I gave you a homework to do question number two, that is, match the following words with their meanings. I hope you have done, but let's quickly check the answers. So please get your pen and or your pencil ready and match it if you need to do some corrections. You have words and the word meanings given in the uh, another side of the column. So, the meaning, the word diverged has its meaning in the right hand side column. So, the meaning of diverged is branched away. Branched away. Next, wood. Wood means forest. Next, undergrowth. Undergrowth means shrubs 
or a mass of bushes. D. Claim. Claim means demand. Next, sigh. Sigh means a deep, long breath. Trodden. Trodden means walked on. Next, bent. It means curved. And the last one, hands. Means from now onwards. From now on. So, here you are. Now we are done with this. Now let's go back to question 1. We'll begin with this question number 1 in today's class. Let me read out the question. Following words describe either of the two roads the poet is talking about in the poem. Fill the table below choosing appropriate word or words given below. Students, you can see there are a list of words given. The words are bent in the undergrowth, fair, better, grassy, worn, trodden black, less traveled. So among these words, you need to select and keep those words in the first road column and in the second road column. So looking at the poem, I think you can feel which words go to the first column and, the, and which words go to the second column. The first word is or the phrase is bent in the undergrowth. Where do you think this word will fit? In the first road or the second road? You know, the traveler was confused. He found two road diverged. And how does he describe the roads? He describes the first road as bent in the undergrowth. So the bent in the undergrowth phrase should be written in the first road column. Are you clear? Next, fear. F-A-I-R, fear. Fear goes to the second road because he compares these two roads in the poem. As you can see that in the second stanza. Then he then took the other as just as fear. That means... Leaving the first road, he goes to the second road because he finds that as fair as the first road. So this word goes to the second column. Next, better. This word also should be written in the second road column. Better. Less traveled. Which word does the traveler find less traveled road? He finds the second road less traveled so fill this word in the less traveled section next grassy the second road was grassy the first road was completely worn out it was trodden black isn't it and next word is less traveled we have already done that all right now you know bent in the undergrowth Worn and trodden black. These three words are in the first column and the remaining words are in the second column. Now, we will go to the next question. Turn to your book at page number 96. Look at the first question. Reading comprehension. <music> Fill in the blanks using suitable words from the box again you are given the words in the box you need to use them to complete the poem by filling in the blanks there you are given words like less traveled road roads it's a plural form decision 
difference, speaker, difficult, dilemma, and choices. So all of these words, you read the paragraph or the lines, then you choose it according to the poem, where do they fit? Let's read and try to fill it. The poem is about a dash. So, what do you think is the poem about? It's about dilemma. Dilemma means the confusion that the speaker has faced. Yes, automatically you can fill this. The speaker has faced. Next, he has dash between two roads. You know the word between indicates that you have some kind of options there. So the synonym of option is choices. He has choices between two roads. He compares both the dash. What does he compare? He is on the way, he is on a journey. So he compares the roads, both the roads. So take the plural roads. Uh, next, he takes a long time to take the dash. What does he do? He has to take a decision, isn't it? So he takes a long time to take the decision. It is dash for him. Is it easy for him? No. He stood there, thought for some time. So it is difficult for him. So you need to feel the answer a difficult in this blank. Finally, he chooses the dash. What does he finally choose? Which road? The less traveled road. And what happened? That has made a dash in his life. You can see this in the last stanza. And that has made a difference in his life. I hope you are with me, students. After completing this question, immediately you can see there are more questions left to be done. So we completed question 1 from question I, I mean. And now we have two more questions. So let's go to the next. Find the words from the poem which rhyme with the words given below. Rhyming words. You know what are rhyming words? Rhyming words means the words that has similar sound ending or repetition of the similar sounds uh, specially used as an effect in the final positions of lines of the poems and songs rhyming words are usually used in the poems and rhymes that is the quality of the poems so here also you need to find the rhyming words. So you are given an example here. Would rhymes with the word stood and could. So you need to find the other rhyming words of would, fair, day, sigh. So can you try to find the other rhyming words? Would, stood, could, fear, were, dear, day, lay, way, sigh, I, bye. Thank you. You have understood what rhyme is. Students, now we will move on to the final question. That is to answer the questions. There are some questions given that reflect 
whether you have understood the poem properly or not so after reading the poem you are supposed to answer all of these questions given in question number 3 page 96 let's start with the first question who is the speaker in the poem do you know what is the title of the poem we are learning the road not taken so can you tell me who is the speaker in the poem the speaker in the poem is traveler that's correct here the traveler is the speaker do not be confused do not say robert frost because in the poem the narrator is not the writer he is the person who is traveling through the forest next question where is the speaker standing in this poem did you think of the answer let me tell you you can write down in your copy if you want the speaker is standing at the point where the road is separated or you can write diverged both are synonyms the speaker is standing at the point where the road is separated or diverged so this is the answer for second question now question number c why does he stop there for a long time why does he stop there for a long time where did the speaker stop at the point where the road was diverged why did he stop there please try this he stops there for a long time to decide which road to travel yes you are correct he stops there for a long time because there are two ways and he has to decide only one road which he has to travel or he has to choose and travel so i'm moving on to the next question why is he in a dilemma this poem is all about the confusion or dilemma faced by the speaker or the traveler now i think you know what the answer is and why is the speaker in dilemma it's simple the speaker is in dilemma because there are two ways and he has to choose only one to travel sometimes we also face this type of confusion when we have 2 3 4 options we need to choose only one and we have to think over it for a long time before deciding the best decision so the speaker here also has two roads he has to choose only one so he is in dilemma next question which road does he choose to travel students you know from the poem in the fourth paragraph the traveler says two roads diverged in a wood and i i took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference so here in this last paragraph you can see there were two roads diverged and 
I took the one less traveled by. That means the writer, sorry, the speaker or the traveler chooses to travel the less traveled road. Is that clear? He chooses to travel the less traveled road. Next question. Why does he leave the other one? According to the poem, the traveler travels the second one, which is a less traveled road. Why does he leave the first road? Do you have any idea? Let me read a line from third stanza. In leaves no step at trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Here, it clearly mentions that he leaves the other one to, to travel for the next time or to travel next time. Are you clear now? Why does he leave the other one? He leaves the other one to travel next time. Simple, okay? Next question. Is the speaker optimistic? Optimistic means expecting positive results to happen or thinking positive about the situation. So, how can you say this? There are two questions. Is the speaker optimistic? How can you say this? Yes, he thinks that the road he chose will lead him to the right destination. You are right. We can say that the speaker is an optimistic person as he thinks that the road he chooses will definitely lead him to the right destination. And in the second stanza of the last, sorry, the second line of the last stanza, he says that I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages. That means he will be telling somebody about his success story in future. By choosing the road, he knows that he will have a good future. Anyways, now we are going to the next question. Do you think he has made the right decision? Yes, absolutely. We think that he has made a right decision. Because he tells that at the end, it made the difference. That means he obtained or he achieved success in his life. So we can say he took a right decision. What do you think the roads refer to? Students, do you have any idea what the road or the roads refer to in this poem? Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. What does this roads mean? We can say that the road, the roads refer to different decisions we make in our life. We can compare the two roads with two decisions that the speaker had to take in his life. Isn't it? So, you can simply write the answer. I think the roads refer to the different decisions we make in life. Just a sentence answer is enough. Now, the last question. What is the central idea of the poem? What is the main idea of the poem? I think this is also an important question. As I have already told you in the summary that the central idea of the poem is 
is that we need we need to be courageous and we need to think carefully to make correct decisions in our life so that we might be successful in our future let me repeat this you can write the answer this way the central idea of the poem is that we need to be courageous courageous means very brave bold or daring person and think very carefully to make decisions in our life so that we might be successful in future are you clear now what is the central idea of the poem i'm sure you have understood it well so students we have already completed the exercises and activities related to the poem now we are towards the end of the program or end of the class so before leaving uh, i want to assign you some task and that is to revise the poem and the exercises we did in the class today that means you revise the match the following questions fill in the blanks questions a uh, rhyming words and revise again this question answers that we discussed by reading the poem again and another homework is for the next class we are going to learn another scene passage or narrative essay given in your book at page number 97 a scary secret of two sisters this is a narrative essay so i want you to learn this essay line by line underlining all the difficult words and finding their meanings from the dictionary can you do that i'm sure you can do that please read the text at least two times and be ready for our next class with this i have come to an end of today's class and i'll see you again in the next class till then you keep learning stay safe have a nice time शान्ति बस्नेत मिसलाई धन्यवाद कार्यक्रम कस्तो लाग्यो त आजको बसाई सिकेमुलक बन्ने होला कार्यक्रम सुन्दै प्रश्न तथा जिज्ञासा टिपट गर्नु भए के होला होइन त प्रश्न तथा जिज्ञासा अंग्रेजी सिके रेडियो कार्यक्रमको फेसबुक पेज @retioeducatimspf को इनबक्समा र retioeproggmspf@gmail.com मा पठाउन सक्नुहुनेछ प्रश्न तथा जिज्ञासाको समाधान सही थप्सिएको लागि भोलिको कार्यक्रममा पुनः भेट हुनेछ पठन पाठनको क्रममा कुनै जिज्ञासा भए निम्न ठेगानामा सम्पर्क गर्न सक्नुहुनेछ ठेगाना र सम्पर्क टिप्न तयार हुनुस् है ह्युमन प्र्याक्टिस फाउन्डेसन फुङलिङ नगरपालिका चार थाप्लेजुङ फोन नम्बर 0244670740 अवस्था आगामी अंकमा पुनः भेट हुनेछ म अम्बिकाङबाङ बिदा हुन्छु नमस्ते